Do you have pain on the bottom of your foot? You might have plantar fasciitis. In this video, we're gonna talk about three common signs of plantar fasciitis and three tests that you can do at home to see if you have it. Hey guys, this is Mark Robinson. I'm a physical therapist. If you're dealing with plantar fasciitis, it can be very frustrating and you can feel like you're not making progress. You may not be getting better. You may be having this pain on and off for years or you just can't get this pain to go away. Well, one of the most important things for you to do is to make sure that your diagnosis is accurate. If plantar fasciitis isn't your actual problem and you're trying to address the issues leading to plantar fasciitis, then you're not gonna get better because you're focusing on the wrong thing. For example, you could have an issue in your lower back that may be sending a pain signal to the bottom of your foot. And that would be an issue that you need to address in your lower back. Now, if the lower back is not the issue and you really have plantar fasciitis, then you need to focus on exercises to rehab the plantar fascia injury and you can do that. So you're gonna be able to recover faster and more effectively if you know what your diagnosis is. So in this video, I am gonna be showing you three of the classic signs of plantar fasciitis. And we're also gonna cover a few tests that you can do to identify whether or not you might have it. Now, if you want an accurate diagnosis, then I recommend you go see a doctor, like an orthopedic specialist or your physical therapist. They'll be able to do some tests and rule in whether or not you really have plantar fasciitis. What is plantar fasciitis? The plantar fascia is strong connective tissue on the bottom of the foot. It attaches from the heel to the toes. And if you extend the toes upward, you'll feel that the plantar fascia will get tight. Now, this structure, it helps to support the foot during weight-bearing activities, like running or walking, but it can get stressed for various reasons and you can develop pain on the bottom of the foot. Now, people that have had it usually experience it for weeks or months or years, but the term plantar fasciitis, the suffix itis indicates that it's an inflammatory condition. But if you experience this, it's not necessarily from inflammation. It could just be from degeneration and from overstressing of this plantar fascia. So the medical community wants us to use the terminology plantar fasciopathy or plantar fasciosis. This is a more inclusive and accurate uh, definition of what this is. So now that we got that cleared up, let's go ahead and describe three of the classic signs of having an injury to your plantar fascia. Sign number one is having pain on the bottom of the foot, right where the plantar fascia inserts on the heel. You'll typically feel the pain on the inner portion of the heel, which is known as the calcaneus. Now, some people can report pain along the arch of the foot as well, because that's where the plantar fascia is. It goes from the heel to the toes. But the more common and typical presentation is to have pain right at the inner portion of the heel when you press on it, or if you're putting weight onto the heel. So let's go ahead and test to see if you have that. We're gonna test for pain on the bottom of the heel. So you're gonna go ahead and sit and cross your leg and you're gonna go ahead and locate the plantar fascia. So go ahead and put your hands on the bottom of your foot, bring your big toe up like that and you can see your plantar fascia get tight, just like that. And you can see where it inserts at the base of the heel. Well, take your thumb and you're gonna apply pressure right at the base of the heel on the inner portion of it and you're gonna push down and if you get pain, then that is indicating a positive test. Sign number two is getting pain with the first few steps in the morning. When you're sleeping at night, the foot is often positioned downward and the plantar fascia can get shortened and it tends to recover throughout the night. But then when you take those first few steps in the morning, the toes extend as you walk, it stretches the plantar fascia and you can get pain right at the insertion again. So what I want you to do to see if that is one of the signs that you're getting is journal your level of pain during the day. Before you go to bed, write down on a scale of zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain imaginable, write down your level of pain before you go to bed. Then write down your level of pain when you wake up in the morning before you walk and before you put your foot on the ground. And then, after you've taken a few steps, write down your level of pain after walking. And if your number is higher, if you have more pain in the morning, then that is a classic sign of having plantar fasciitis. 
Sign number three is having pain with the windlass test. The windlass mechanism occurs when the toes are extended. The plantar fascia gets tight and the arch of the foot is raised upward. This provides structure and support to the foot. I'll show you how it works. So this jump rope is the plantar fascia. It attaches to the toes and as the toes are lifted upward, the plantar fascia gets tightened. As the toes go down, there's some slack in the plantar fascia. And as the toes are extended, then the plantar fascia gets tight again. And if you're having pain, you'll often experience that pain at the insertion point because the plantar fascia is getting tight. So let's go ahead and do the windlass test. The next test is the windlass test. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cross the leg, pull back on the big toe, and you can see the plantar fascia get tight like in the first test. And if you get pain on the bottom of the foot or at the insertion of the plantar fascia on the heel, then that is a positive test. You could also sensitize the test by pressing at the insertion point with your thumb. And if you get pain with the big toe being extended, that's a positive test. There are other signs of plantar fasciitis, such as having pain after prolonged standing or prolonged walking. You could also get pain after prolonged inactivity. For example, if you're sitting at your desk for a prolonged period of time, and then you take those first few steps, you can get pain with that. Now, it is important to note with plantar fasciitis that one or two of these signs alone does not mean that you have it. You can still have other sources of your pain that are not coming from irritation to that plantar fascia. For example, I said in the beginning of the video that the lower back can often refer some pain to the bottom of the foot. If you are sitting at your desk for a long period of time, okay, and you have uh, some strain on the lower back and you go to walk, you can get some pain on the bottom of the foot coming from the lower back. Just having that sign alone does not mean that you have plantar fasciitis. So that is why these three signs are guidelines and they help paint a clearer picture for you. But if you want a definitive and more conclusive diagnosis, then I highly recommend that you go see your doctor or a physical therapist. If you had all three signs of plantar fasciitis, then it's very possible that you might have it. And you should seek medical treatment so you can get better. If you work on improving your mobility, if you do strength training, if you work on improving your movements and motor control of your body, and if you modify your activities, you can often get better. Now, my next video is gonna show you some physical therapy exercises that you can do for plantar fasciitis. I'm gonna discuss some of these categories of exercises and some examples that you can do to be able to recover and to improve your mobility, improve your strength, and get back to doing all the things that you love to do because having plantar fasciitis decreases your quality of life. It limits you. You can't go out with your friends. You can't walk for long distances. You have to sit down often and that is no way to live. So if you want to recover from plantar fasciitis, then watch my next video. I'll place a link above. Thank you for watching this video. If you got a benefit today, like this video, share it with a friend, subscribe to this channel, Turn on your post notifications so you know when our newest videos are released. I'll see you guys next time.